Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. You've got ribs and you've got Carolina-style ribs. No, no, they're not the same. No, not the same. They might just be the best ribs there are in the world because Carolina, North Carolina, South Carolina is pig country. And in pig country, they know how to cook pork. If they know all about that, how can they not be better than, for instance, Texas style ribs? I'm just saying. But you decide that in the comment section down below. In the meantime, I'm going to fire up my barbecue. Let's open it up. First thing that I'm gonna do is put in some briquettes and spread them out. And the idea behind this is that we're recreating the style of barbecue that they have in the Carolina states, north and south, where they love to cook over burned down embers from a fire, spread them out and place the whole hog on top of them. Just like they do with their ribs, take a bat of coals and put their pork on top of it. Except we're not using coals, we're using briquettes. And I wanna make sure I spread them out evenly as much as possible. The second thing that I'm gonna be looking out for is to get this grill grate in and set it to the highest position. So I'm not gonna go all the way down to the lowest position like this. I'm gonna take it up all the way to here. And now I have a lot of distance between the briquettes and the grill grate. And if I hold my hand over the fire, I can feel that there's a light to moderate heat in this grill. So nothing that's going to be roasting the ribs or grilling the ribs. Uh, this is pure smoking, but the distance is so big that it's all going to be a low and slow. Now that the barbecue is set up, all we need to do is make sure that the top vent is open and the bottom vent is also all the way open. I got a beautiful rack of ribs right here. Look at that beautiful dark red meat and that intramuscular fat, the fat that sits on top. Oh, this is gonna be some good eating. Now, if we take a look at the back, you can see that the membrane's still on. We got a nice bit of fat right here. And in this case, we're leaving the membrane on. This is important when you're using this cooking method. That membrane is your friend. You wanna leave it on. It's going to protect the ribs from drying out. All we need to do now is get a rub. And in this case, I'm using the Pitmaster X Classic Barbecue Rub. I'm gonna sprinkle that on. Of course, I've written down the recipe for you on our website, pitmasterx.com. The link's down below in the video description. And I'm gonna season both sides. And the thicker the ribs, the more seasoning you're going to need. And that's what I'm looking for. A nice layer of flavor on these ribs. Let's put them on. And it's as easy as just placing them in the center. Look at that giant rack of ribs. <laughs> just like in the Carolina States, big ribs. Looking good. Let's close the lid. And all we need to do now is wait. And while we're waiting, we're going to make Carolina gold straight from the mountains. Pig country means apple country. And therefore I have my apple cider vinegar that I like to put in my pan. This is about a cup of apple cider vinegar, which is 250 milliliters for the people from Europe. Now, of course I got to balance out that acidity that sits in apple cider. In itself, it's already sweet, but I'm gonna add more sweetness. And therefore I'm using dark brown sugar. About a quarter cup of it. If you like it sweeter, just add a little bit more. You can play around with the amounts if you like to. Change it up a little bit, but I'm just giving you a good lead of what is a good sauce. Now, then it's time to add what's well, most used sauce, which is ketchup. And I'm gonna add a quarter cup of that. And now it's time to add the ingredients that give Carolina sauce the name Carolina Gold. And this is it. Yellow mustard. I recommend buying your mustard locally because local mustard is the most beautiful thing ever. And if you're lucky, you can even speak to the miller and talk about which type of mustard you prefer. I'm gonna start off by adding a quarter cup and I'm going to stir this up and let it dissolve. Then it's time to add a tablespoon of Worcester sauce. And to boost the flavors, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of chili flakes to bring some heat. Now that's optional, so if you don't want that, just leave it out. I love the heat. Now I'm gonna let this slowly simmer for about five minutes and then my sauce is done. All right, let's do a quick taste test. Whee! Whoa. Tangy, mustardy, and you know the acidity really pops. The sugar doesn't do anything other than just sweeten things up and just makes the sauce better. This is a really an amazing sauce. And I bet you, if it hits that pork, it's gonna make the pork so good. The ribs have been on for about half an hour and I wanna check in 
And as you can see, the ribs are running at around 300 Fahrenheit, 150 Celsius. And look at that. They're changing the color a little bit. The heat is still moderate and to low heat, but I think we could add a little bit more. Let's take a look at the bottom of these ribs. The bottom is starting to dry up nicely. Don't worry if we're flipping these ribs around. And I think we're well on the way, going in the right direction. The heat is a little on the low side, so I'm going to take the grill grates off, add a few more new briquettes, and then put it back and let it continue to smoke. The ribs are almost done, and look at that. Ho oh, ho ho! That is the North Carolina bark that you got on your ribs. That is pure flavor. I'm seeing mahogany red from the smoke. I see bones popping. I see a crust building up right there, and I see juicy meat underneath. Just see how that shines through. But typical for these ribs is that we need to keep them a little bit moist. And that's why we have our delicious mopping sauce. That North Carolina gold that goes on to the ribs, keeping them moist while they cook for the last phase. Just want to get a thin layer of this sauce on. And that's why the sauce is thinner than you would normally have a barbecue sauce. That Carolina gold needs to be thin so it brushes on easily. And look at this. It changed the color of the ribs, makes them look amazing, but check this out. Look on this side of the ribs. On this side, the barbecue sauce already dried up, or at least that's what it looks like. But in reality, that crust that sit here soaked up the barbecue sauce and used it to become juicy once again. That means I gotta put on a little more of it, another layer. Until the ribs stop soaking up the barbecue sauce. I'm going to keep on repeating this process a couple of times during the last phase of the cook. Keeping it nice and moist. Making it more sticky, more tasty. Ooh, look at my ribs. I told you that I love Carolina ribs. And this is the reason why I love them. With the gold sitting on top, with the chili flakes just popping through, this looks so freaking good. Like I wanna absorb them, I wanna eat the whole thing right now. But I have to wait. This comes straight off the barbecue. I have to let them cool down a little bit first. Man, I wish you could smell this. It smells like sweet mustard. Look at that. Juicy smoked ribs, Carolina style. Let me get another slice of that. Now the proof that this is the perfect rib. Mm. A bite straight through the middle, cooked to perfection. Well, I've probably got sauce everywhere, but it's the real proof. North Carolina ribs. Go to our website, find the recipe, the link's down below. Go make it yourself, you're gonna love it. Guaranteed. If not, we'll give people money the back. money they back. Give, well, yeah. they Everything you pay to watch this video, I'll, I'll give it back. I'm a smart guy.